What is an ideal work environment for everyone, no matter what their communication style is, that everyone can communicate with each other? It all gets back to being emotionally present. I was doing some training at a major corporation. And when they called me in to find out what this was all about, it was a bunch of staffers who called me in, and the CEO is listening to this. And he said, how can we be sure th that there's going to be any benefit? I said, I guarantee. Now, that doesn't mean anything. He didn't know me from Adam. I said, I guarantee by the time I end this program, your people will be much happier to come to work. His response was, I don't care how happy they are. And I said to him, because I'm um, an assertive woman, <laughs> I said to him, yes, you do, <laughs> just like that. And I was so confident. And again, confidence is part of the communication process. I was so confident because I know what I can do. And sure enough, the bottom line was so enhanced yes. that other divisions of this corporation brought me in. And they said, whatever you did there, we want you to do here. It was a, an enormous benefit. And people. what you did was simply and enhance their communication style. What I did was simply enhance their communication skills, but I was dealing with empowerment. Mm -hmm. Empowerment issues sound great on, on paper, but, well, a lot of people have difficulty dealing with what happens when you have an empowered staff. So when some of the staffers went into the boss's office, and said, look, I want to tell you about such and such. And the boss is on his computer and just doing his computer work. And the staffer said, I need you to look at me when I'm talking to you. The boss said to me afterwards, wow, you are training them. I didn't realize that you were also training us. Because in essence, with this kind of work, when you throw a pebble in the ocean, there is a rippling effect. One CEO came up to me after doing one of my Lunch and Learns. And I was doing, they were calling me in every week to do a different one. And I was coming up with all these sexy titles and everybody was in attendance. Soon we had standing room only. And he was participating also because so often it's the CEO who hires you and he doesn't attend. But he was participating also. He grabbed me and he said, Dr. Gilda, I have to tell you, you have made such a difference in my relationship at home. And I said, I don't know anything about your relationship at home. We never talked about it. He said, it's the same work. If you're going to be emotionally present, you're going to be emotionally present. If you're empowered, you are empowered. And so on down the list. It's life enhancement training. And it's the same work that I've been doing with the female veterans to give them a boost in life, to let them know that here are communication skills, and all they knew were male communication skills. But intermix the male communication skills from the military with your own essence. And that's what I bring out of people. I was teaching a graduate course. I had a cop crying in my class because I push buttons. And I get people to recognize that they can be better than who they were earlier. Bloomberg called me, a, Bloomberg, the network, called me a female Tony Robbins with a doctorate. I thought that was really neat. <laughs> that is terrific.